Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the Nine and a Know It All podcast. I am your host, Josh, Nine and a Know It All, and man, I am I'm fired up right now because yesterday I'm recording this on Sunday, so yesterday on Saturday I got to go cover baseball. It had been three months since I'd been able to go cover an actual game. Before that, I only got to cover a couple of things across this entire summer. So three months without covering any baseball. It was driving me nuts. I was going insane. My family knew it. I knew it. I got to go out there, photograph, took almost 1,700 photos yesterday. Had a ton of fun. It was so much fun. Got to cover the Centralia Community College, uh, their first inter-squad scrimmage of the year um, because of everything going on. So it was a ton of fun. Great weather. It was actually perfect. I got to meet a number of guys who I've had on this podcast, but I've never met before. So that was that was pretty awesome as well. I got a chance to talk to some guys, you know, and just uh, just enjoy baseball again. So I'm still fired up from that. Possibly could be covering more stuff this week, um, which I'm fired up about as well. And just want to say, hey, if you're a team or a player and you want me to come out and photograph your team, contact me. I'll get you the information. And, you know, we can talk about that because – Man, it was so much fun. I missed covering baseball. I'm just glad to have the chance to do it again and really excited for the spring. But ladies and gentlemen, enough about my experiences, even though, once again, it was awesome to be out there covering baseball after three months. I'm excited for today's guest. It's another NWAC player and specifically a lower Columbia College alum because that's the team I've really covered the most last few years. And I'm excited for this guest, Dakota Hawkins from LCC, but he's now... WSU, Dakota, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? Doing pretty good. So Dakota, obviously right now, you know, last spring things got shut down. But for you, you still were able to at least still talk with schools and actually commit to going to Washington State University. How is that going so far? Uh, it's going really good over here. I mean, I've been over here since about the end of August, about middle of August over here. And once everything got going, it's it's going great. I love it over here in Pullman, you know weather was great for the first month and a half especially when we started fall ball and then we've got a little bit of COVID testing here and there we've got some actually that we got bagged from playing for a little bit of the fall but some are coming back and it's been going pretty good over here. So for you what is it like for you to get back on the field to get a chance to you know get back to I guess some sense of normalcy being on the baseball field? Oh it's great I mean like you said we got shut down in the spring which was something that nobody wanted to see. And, you know, we were all looking forward to here at LC to, you know, go for a four-peat, and that's what we were going for. We knew we could have done it. And, you know, with it being shut down and taking, you know, four months off or whatever and then getting back on it, it, it was just great to be back on the field. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that, you know, for those of you who aren't in the Northwest, Lower Columbia had won three in a row and really, I think, had a pretty above-average shot of, of making it four in a row with the pitching and the – the offense, the offense, I think, was stronger this year than it had been for a few years. But pitching-wise, you guys were actually really deep. It was fun to see where guys have gone. Obviously, you guys have had – you had Tyson Guerrero, who is at, at University of Washington. You got Alex Brady, who's at LSU. You're at Washington State. You guys were a very deep pitching staff. Yeah, we were – we had a lot of good arms and a lot of tough arms that would go out and give us four, five, six, seven innings, whatever we needed – I've heard of the club, and they would just go out and compete their heart out. And then, like I said, you're at Washington State University. What was it about that school and that program that that drew you to commit there? Uh, just just the coaching staff. I mean, they've had they had a new coaching staff this last year, so it would have been like my sophomore season at L, uh, LCC. They got a new coaching staff, and then once they contacted me, we always kept up. We always talked about what was going on and what would be the best and everything, and especially having one of my old high school roommates that I graduated with, Brandon White, he's over here as well. I talked with him, and he, he said the new coaching staff's great. The pitching coach is great. So I was like, that's probably my best fit to go and play some Pac-12 baseball. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, you know, I always when guys always talk to me about, you know, JUCO baseball, I always tell them, hey, you go to schools like LCC and, and Everett and, and Pierce and Spokane, you're going to get chances to play at the next level, especially Division One, And, you know, that's one of the things – there's a lot of talent, especially in the NWAC, I think, for guys who want to go on and play at the higher level because it just – it opens a lot of doors. Absolutely. NWAC's absolutely unbelievable. It's so good, so great. I mean, I've got a couple – I got actually another teammate of mine who played at Everett, 
and he's over here at WSU with me as well and everything. And NWAC's just great. There's great competition, great teams, great coaching, great players. It's, it's great. You know, everybody's talking about, oh, I want to go D1. D, you know, both play the big schools out of high school. It's like, if you don't get that chance right out of high school, go to the JUCO, go to the NWAC, especially if you have a chance to. And it's just great baseball. Yeah, it is. And then for you, I mean, you were, you know, from Chehala, so not too far away from Laura Columbia. I mean, it's only, what, a 40-minute drive at the most. So, you yeah. know, was that one of the big reasons why you chose Laura Columbia? What else went into the decision to go there initially? Um, so, initially, I had I had a couple kids that I, like, looked up to growing up that I played at LCC, like Michael Forgione. We had, um, what's his name, Toby Johnson, who played at LCC, and I, I knew it was a great program. And then I was talking with Coach Eddie Smith, who was recruiting me at the time, and we always keep in contact. I'd always be down at LCC watching practice, especially, like you said, it's only 40 minutes away, so it's easy to make, too. And I just fell in love with the campus, fell in love with the coaches. Like, this is going to be a great fit for me. And then Eddie took the job at Tulane, which was kind of heart-wrenching for me because with him recruit, being recruiting me and everything, it was like I was looking forward to play for him, but that still didn't change my mind. I knew he still had a great coaching staff, and I still wanted to pursue there at LC. Yes, thank you. you. know, even once Eddie moved on, you know, to Tulane, there was still a strong foundation coaching-wise. I mean, Eric Lane taking over the head coaching spot and just really the whole coaching staff. Even, you know, you mentioned Forgione, who is now one of the assistant coaches at Laura Columbia. It's a it's a deep coaching staff. It's a young staff, but it's a fun staff that I've really enjoyed being around just because not only are they, you know, they have experience, but they're also extremely knowledgeable in the game of baseball. Absolutely. They're, they're great with everything, especially with Coach Lane, just being the head honcho over there at LC. He just knows everything. You ask him from pitching to fielding to hitting, he's got your answer. Forge, being with the infielders, the catchers, the base running. Forge, breaking rule or breaking uh, records here and there for running. It's just unreal. It's great having him there. It made our base running better, too. And then with Sanderson, our pitching coach, he just, he's a great dude. I mean, I, was luck or I had the luxury of spending pretty much two seasons with them and that whole summer. So him and I got pretty close, and we always just picked things at each other about different pitching stuff. And I know he's one guy I can always go to about little, any little thing that I need. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, you got a chance to play, you know, part of the West Coast League up here. And this summer, what did you get to do this, at all? Did you get to play at all this summer, or were you kind of pretty much shut down with everything happening? So I was going to go up to Victoria again. And then with COVID hitting and everything, that got shut down. So then with Coach Sanderson taking over at Wenatchee, there were some teams that were still going to play. So I was going to go play at Wenatchee, get some innings, and then that got canceled. And I was like, okay. So I was a little bit thrown here and there at home. And then a buddy of mine texted me, playing for the Wild Wild West League that Portland Pickles put on down in uh, Oregon. And he goes, mm -hmm. hey, we need some pitchers if you want to come throw. I go, oh, great. Yeah, well, send me your schedule, and i let you know what can I make. Send me the schedule, and I went and pitched, I think, like, 11 innings and two games over there. And it was great. It was fun. It was a great little experience to, you know, not being able to play for a few months and then being able to do this. It was great. Yeah, that's one of the things I know guys were doing whatever they could to get some innings in just to, to, just to be around the game. And for you, you know, when you do get a chance to step back on the field, like you said, this spring, NWAC was shut down. What was it like for you just kind of as you stepped on the field? I mean, how did you feel? What things did you kind of process as you were returning to the game? Uh, it was just like an adrenaline rush. It's like, I haven't played this in so long. Let's get after it. It's like, it's, it feels like you would miss a step, but you would You just got back in there and you just dug deep and let, let it go. And then, you know, for this fall, obviously, once again, you're at WSU, you're, you're working on things. What are some things you're focusing on for yourself personally to try and improve upon as you get ready for the spring? So what a lot of, things people think you know it's like physical standpoint but over here at WSU it's a lot of like mental standpoint as well we've been doing a lot of mental training to like keep us into the game longer and like know who we are as a person and a pitcher than just being a pitcher so it's it's been great over here it's more than just physical ability to get better it's a lot of the mental as well which has helped helped me I think uh, personally with the mental standpoint just becoming or mentally stronger mentally tougher and everything yeah, that's one of the things I think a lot of, especially young players who are just getting into college, don't realize just how much mental preparation it really takes to be successful. Because, you know, I know I've seen a number of coaches who 
obviously they focus on the physical, but they take a lot of extra time to really tell guys, hey, you know, when you're getting when you're going to bat, think about everything, you know, think about the what you're going to look for for pitchers, you know, knowing how you want to approach a, a hitter. It, it's a lot more to it than I think a lot of young players realize. And focusing on that can make a guy a lot better just with that as, aspect of it. Yeah, absolutely. That was one of the very first things that we did as like a, as a team once we all got together when fall like was able to like start. We were doing a lot of mental training. We met with this guy named Jerry Lujan, who coached Green, our head coach over here, it was when he was at New Mexico State four or five years ago. He got he met with him and then they did it. So it was like a big mental standpoint, like who you are, what you are, and kind of stuff like that. And he brought that in with him, and I think that was great for the me personally yeah definitely and then you know as you're as you're looking back in your time at lower columbia what are some of the memories some of the things you you know you take away from that from that time you know whether it be teammates coaches or just even just fun things you guys did oh, a lot it, the biggest thing is friendships the, the friendships you get out of playing with new guys you know it's just the friendships are probably the biggest part and it's something that you will always live to remember and then for you, I mean, obviously we talked about how you have teammates who are playing all across the country and stuff. Do you t catch yourself once in a while just kind of, you know, peeking in and seeing what they're doing, keeping track of them, just kind of as a, almost as a, a motivator for yourself to make yourself push a little harder? Yeah, a little bit. You know, I chit chat with Tyson every once in a while. And then I talk with Nick Jennings as well, who's over at uh, Eastern Oregon, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And then Alex Brady and I, who's over at Louisiana, you know, 1,700 miles away, him and I keep keep in touch every day. We just ch chat on anything, ask them how things are going. And we just talk every day, which is great. You know, being so far away, we're still able to keep contact with each other and talk about how things are going. Yeah, I know for me, it's fun. Even though I wasn't a coach, just simply a, a media guy, you know, taking photographs of the team. It's fun to see where all of you guys are at and how you're doing. It's just, it's just fun and exciting to see, once again, Lower Columbia sending out great players all across the nation. That's really uh, been Lower Columbia's MO as well as the NWAC, just sending out talent and really filling in the ranks of a, a lot of Division One teams across the nation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Coach Lane does a really, really great job recruiting us kids to go to Lower Columbia and then improving our skills to get us onto the next spot. And he does a great, just a great job putting us out there and everything to get us where we could fit well. Uh, one of the fun things I love about JUCO baseball is the road trips. I love hearing the stories of things that happen. And, you know, obviously for the West region, you know, when you drive to Centralia, Grace Harbor, it's not that far of drives, even to, to Pierce and Tacoma. But obviously you guys have done some longer road trips. What are some of your favorite memories road trip wise, just being out there with the team? So the road trips are great. You know, we, you know, for most part, the closest, the closest one we got, like you said, is Centralia, which is 40 minutes north. But everything else is about an hour and a half. And so it's like we had enough time to a little goof around, not like goof around a whole lot, but just play some, you know, phone games, you know, like Nick, Alex and I, we get Uno going together on our phones. We play Uno here and there and just with each other. But probably the most memorable stuff is when we sweep teams and on the way home, we take all the freshmen, we pick out a song. So all the sophomores pick out a song for the freshmen to sing. They put headphones on and they blare the music so they can't hear themselves sing and you just sing at the top of your lungs. And I was a victim of that freshman year. And I had to sing Girls Just Want to Have Fun. And let me tell you, that was not pretty, but it was fun. Everybody had fun doing it. Yeah, that's one of the things, you know, there's different ways that different teams bond. But in the end, it's just about having fun and, and laughing. And when guys jump in and do that, I know like uh, a couple years ago, I talked with Centralia as uh, head coach. And he was talking about how he – had guys do their their karaoke and that type of stuff, but he didn't record it. He just wanted the guys just to do it, mm -hmm. just to do something that made them uncomfortable. But at the same time, it bonded them with the team, and it just it was fun. It's, it's got things guys will always remember and laugh about, and always have to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, JUCO is probably the JUCO baseball is probably my most two years of fun playing with baseball and everything, and it was just great. You know, and, and that's one of the things you know, playing in the in the NWAC. A lot of people don't realize that the the teams up here in the Northwest have some nice stadiums. There are some that aren't as nice, but there's a lot of stadiums up here that are very historic or are just beautiful to begin with. So for you in, in your NWAC career, what, what was your favorite NWAC place to play? 
Well, that's tough. Yeah. Being in the NWAC, you know, everybody talks about Everett's field. And with Everett being in the north, we never got to play him. And so I see pictures of it, wanted to play, wanted to see how it was actually playing on it. So I never got the chance to play in that. But with probably the most like historic, like cool looking place that I would play at would be Olympic Stadium over at the harbor playing in Grace Harbor. You know, and being only 40 minutes from Lower Columbia, I've played at a lot of a lot of baseball fields in my life growing up since I've been playing baseball since I was pretty much four. And so Grace Harbor is the one that always catches your eye with how it could be a football field and a baseball field all in one in the big wraparound stadium. That's probably my favorite historical looking stadium that I've played at. Yeah, that one is beautiful. I got there for the first time this summer and I was amazed, especially when I started looking at the history of it with the teams and the players that have been there. It's pretty amazing. And then thinking on a bigger scale, what has been your favorite stadium overall that you've ever played in? You know, that's, that's tough because I was able to, you know, when I was young, about 16, I was able to play in Farmington, New Mexico, which was a gorgeous stadium. And then being able to play at the Hillsborough Hop Stadium when I was 15 down in Oregon. And then playing a couple of Arizona terms as well. There's a lot of a lot of beautiful fields I get to play at. But probably my favorite that I've got to play at, including the fans and just how everything was, was probably the Farmington, the Farmington, New Mexico field at Ricketts, Ricketts Park, I believe it's called. Yeah, I think so. And that, that is, I've heard some good things about that. And like I said, I've been to Phoenix a, a few times and there's a ton of beautiful fields down there. And, and even Hillsboro, being in the Northwest, it is, it's actually kind of, it almost feels like it's hidden, but at the same time, everyone in the Northwest knows about it. It's a beautiful field to be at. Absolutely. And then, you know, also, you know, kind of looking back at your lower Columbia days, I mean, you had to be a part of the, the championship team last year. You got to be around all the guys and, and be out there. What was it like for you to be a part of that championship team and being really, you know, part of that three-peat? Because that's, you know, that was pretty rare, something that doesn't happen a lot in any level. What was it like for you to be a part of that? Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. You know, it's, you talk about how, you know, winning champions are great, you know, like everything, but then being part of a three-peat like that to go into a history book, it's like, this is awesome. This is what we plan for. This is what we're trying to do for us. And as a program at all, like put our, put the names, keep higher up on the list and everything. And just being able to put ourselves in the history book with a three-peat, it was just, it was an amazing feeling. And then for you, I mean, obviously to, to make it to the college level and to be successful, you know, you, you had to put a lot of time in, you got to put a lot of work and, and a lot of sweat in, but it also takes people behind you who are pushing you and motivating you. Who in your life has been those motivators to really help you be the best each and every day? Oh, it's It's got to be my parents. I mean, my dad's been coaching me in sports since I was four years old and every single sport I played pretty much. And then I, and my mom as well. She was always there, always taking me to sports, always bringing me this and that whenever I needed as well. My, my parents were the biggest supporters of my life growing up playing all these sports and they keep pushing me. Like we keep contact every day. We call each other every day after practice, you know, chit chat how things are back at home and how practice went and everything like that. And, you know, and my parents was probably the biggest, but right behind that, it's just the rest of my family. All right. So my family's right behind me. Just keep pushing me, you know, just keep telling me to keep doing what I'm doing and things are going to work out for me. Now, you're pretty talented, but in your family, I saw a tweet just recently that you may have a more talented sibling in the area of baseball and softball. Now, what is it like for you as a, as a big brother to see your little sister starting to come around and, and get her first Grand Slam the, uh, what, a week ago or so? Uh, I think so, yeah, about a week, week and a half ago. So my sister and I have always been really competitive towards each other, always. I mean, it's just that, sil that sibling rival we have. And so she is, she's starting her sophomore year of high school, or she's in her sophomore year of high school this year. And she is pretty much, a, she would be, a, she would have been a three star or three sport varsity starter for volleyball, basketball, and softball. But basketball season early in the year, she tore her ACL. So that was a big setback for her. But I did the same thing senior year during football season. So I knew how to help her get back on the track of the train faster and smarter so she would be able to get back when she could and be able to go 100%. And so I was always helping out there, but there was we were always competition. We were always going to the cage when we were younger, hitting, hitting the cage off the tee, soft tossing my dad and everything. We'd always play games, just try to be the, you know, try to win it and everything. And you now what she's doing is just unbelievable. She's, she's going to be, she's going to be great. She could probably go to college for either volleyball 
basketball or, or softball, whatever she chooses. And how, as you as a big brother, how proud of you are, of her are you? Oh, it's I may not show it just because it's the older brother, you know, kind of thing. But I'm extremely proud of her. She she's working hard to get where she wants. She just keeps pushing herself to get back on the field and keep keep her stuff up and keep training and everything. And it's I don't show it as much as I probably should and stuff like that. But I'm extremely proud of her. That's awesome. I know it's always fun seeing the the competitiveness between siblings, just for anything. I mean, I I know with with my siblings, I had two little sisters and even just like getting to the table and sitting down was a competition. It just, it kind of, it, it helped us, but at the same time, it, it just, it was fun too. It was fun to be around. Yeah. I mean, especially having the competition back to it when, between us two, it helps in the, on the field as well, you know, and then we'll have, we'll be at home playing, you know, the we will play in little league world series and we'll be screaming, jumping at each other, you know, just messing around playing these games, being competitive, but also having a great time with it. We just, it's just something that, we need on the field as well to be competitive and have fun with it as well. Absolutely. And then Dakota, last question I have for you before I let you go. I mean, obviously, you know, you're, you're playing at division one level and when you're at games, you know, I know I always see the, the younger generation players, whether it be high schoolers or little leaguers, what advice would you have for those, that next wave of players that are coming forward? What is something they need to focus on and do to be successful? Oh, just, just keep grinding. I mean, don't let anything stop you. Like, I can't remember the exact quote coach said, but it was like, don't be afraid to fail or something like that. That's what one of, I think, was our head coach, Coach Green, who was one of the greatest hitting coaches in the nation right now, who's worked really well with our hitters and everything. And he just said, don't be afraid to fail. You know, everybody's like, oh, trying to be uptight, be 100% with everything they do. But, and then when they fail, they get down on themselves. But you can't be afraid to fail. You fail, you know what you did wrong, you fix it, you do it better the next time. And then you get it correct and you keep going. Just don't be afraid to fail and keep grinding. Absolutely. Well, Dakota, thank you so much for taking the time to, to be on the podcast. I really enjoyed talking with you, and I'm excited to see how things go at WSU this uh, upcoming spring. All right. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Have a good day, Dakota. Thank you. You too. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Dakota Hawkins, he is a member of the Washington State University baseball team, former member of the Lower Columbia Community College Red Devils baseball team, once again, they uh, they had a three-peat, and they were on on pace to really have a chance at winning four in a row. It was uh, it was fun to watch. Sad that you know the season got canceled. It was pretty disappointing for everybody, but at the same time, still a lot of talent. Dakota is one of those guys who, you know, he just has raw talent. I mean, just can throw the ball. He pitches. It's unbelievable when he gets on the mound. It's it's a whole different atmosphere for his team. The excitement, the electricity just goes up. And, you know, I, I wish we would have gotten a full season uh, this year to see that before he moved on. But at the same time, I'm excited to see what he does at WSU and even excited to kind of see the future of where things can go and where uh, his potential may take him. So, guys, once again, a lot of fun. I love talking to NWAC guys because it's just, it's just a different mindset for guys who play uh, at the JUCO level, especially the NWAC guys up here because, you know, we deal with – know competition but at the same time they're also dealing with weather and different things like that so it's just it's fun it's fun I love being around it being able to cover the NWAC is probably the greatest part of not any know-it-all it really is you know I get to talk baseball all the time but the fact that I get to cover the NWAC is probably the number one reason why I'm still doing it I mean it's it just it is that much fun it is that enjoyable and it's just it's great baseball I love it but guys with that I'm calling it a podcast had a lot of fun Appreciate Dakota coming on. And guys, until next time, you know, watch some baseball. I think, actually, by the time this one goes live, the Game 7 of the NLCS will be done. So we'll know who is facing the Rays in the World Series. I will tell you guys, the Rays, even though they stumbled a little bit in that ALCS, they're dangerous. And Braves or Dodgers are going to have their hands full with the Rays. But we'll find out who's going to, you know, play them in the World Series. We'll know, actually, once this is out, once again. So you guys, until next time, be safe, and I'll talk to you later.